The warmest of greetings to you, and welcome to Happily Ever Teaching. This is the podcast to help you enthrall your learners in every subject under the sun using the best teaching method known to science storytelling. To do this, we feature special guest educators who are passionately keen to empower your children. I am storyteller Chip Cahoon, and with me today is... Hi, I'm Rob. I work in a school just outside of Milton Keynes, and I've taught every year group from reception up to year six. And I'm Nicola, and I teach a junior school in Hampshire, and at the moment I teach year six children. I have also worked at Teacher Training College and hopefully enthuse students to be fantastic educators themselves. And today we are exploring learning outcomes in history, geography, and religious education. All the humanities with a folktale from the Indian jungle. You can listen to the story by downloading our sister podcast, Fables and Fairy Tales, or search our website, epictales.co.uk, for The Real King of the Jungle. There you'll find a video of me telling the story that you can share with your children. And if you sign up as an epic educator, you'll also get a copy as a paperback joyously illustrated by Winnie the Witch's Corky Paul, as well as the full audiobook for you to download at any time. Right now, though, let's continue our discussion with Nicola, Rob, Tenderway, Loris, and all the other animals. And just as there are many animals in this story, we are kind of covering many subjects in this episode, pretty much all of the humanities, history, geography, and religious education. So um, let's start at the, uh, we'll start at the upper end of the primary range with ages seven to 11. Because um, Nicola, you found some history to explore in this tale did you yes actually there were a couple of children in my class that are particularly into history and when they heard the story they said it reminds me of this it reminds me of this so i i I thought Mm. yeah okay i'll share that one of them um was the idea of world war ii and the fact Ah. that they said that hitler was a bit like um our leopard tenderway trying to take over and trying to dominate other countries so Mm. that was that was a really interesting discussion that we had as a class they'd need to know some facts about world war ii but try to make the links between who the other characters in the story were you know do they represent different countries if it was linked to world war ii and how world war ii ended but did the story end in the same way so sort of making Mm. parallels between the two another idea that i had was about um greek mythology the fact this story does seem to have parallels with um theseus and the minotaur Mm. um the minotaur stays still has his food every day at a certain time um has sacrifices maidens and um people from the island that came over that was sacrificed every day so the minotaur could get his food and then theseus using his brains went through the maze and actually managed to trick the minotaur so it's very very similar again thinking about the parallels looking at the greek mythology looking at world war ii and how do these stories overlap where are there similarities it's sounding like there's loads of elements of pshe and literacy in here as well yeah but in in terms of activity would this be sort of like an investigation you'd uh, set your children on a sort of research yes i think i'd get them to find out i want to know from them what characters in the story would link and be parallel to the ones in the Greek mythology or World War II, whichever one or both you decided to do. Right, okay. And therefore, by doing that, you'd then hopefully get more of an insight behind the motivation of Hitler potentially in World War II and mm. Tenderway in, in the text to actually help them understand how the events happened. So they'd have a clear understanding of the historical events, but in order to be really secure in that, to make those links um, and be able to justify them. So it could be that they stand up and and they present and say what each character represented in World War Two, if it was linked to World War Two. Yeah, it's a brilliant one, isn't it? Because it's going to be encouraging them to really spot those patterns, and it's going to really be enhancing their conceptual literacy i guess which is so and we've mentioned a few times in this podcast just how important conceptual literacy or conceptualization is for just being able to survive as a human being because we're we're constantly doing it all of the time every single word is just a sound that 
um, a glorified monkey is making unless you have <laughs> the ability to use conceptual literacy to you know interpret those sounds as a, as a phrase. That's right. And if a child can explain something to somebody else, then they are really showing their understanding of it. Yeah. So if they're able to make, it's quite high order actually, if they're able to make the link between World War II and this story, they are working at a very high level, I think, in terms of their, like you say, conceptual understanding and understanding of history as well. Absolutely. So that was your history. Can we move on to see the geography that you've pulled out for ages 7 to 11? Um, geography, you've probably thought of this as well, Rob, jungles. I mean, you know, <laughs> where are they in the world? We mentioned this when we did our mass podcast. Where are they in the world? Has the climate affected all the geographical features? There's different types of rainforests and mm. children are understanding those different types of rainforests. Where I live, there's actually a living rainforest near us, near Basingstoke. And years ago, I taught about the jungle and I remember having an incredible, um, we, we created a great display, which I'll talk about in the art section. But um, we went to visit a living rainforest and it taught us so much about about um, the different aspects of Mm. geography and actually if there is a living rainforest near you to go and visit it and let the children experience and explore it is is amazing yeah though i i have to say because you've used the word forest and rainforest a few times and one of the things i really had to do when going into writing this story down was research the differences between forests and jungles because they, oh, they, they okay. can't be used um, uh, completely synonymously. Uh, I mean, yeah, d- don't apologize because it's no, something it's that I think learning. I was probably guilty of before yeah, I, I started the story. But I did mm. want to really make sure because this is a jungle. It's set in the Indian jungle. It's definitely a jungle in India, not a forest. Um, would you explore the differences between them is that a thing definitely i've I've just i've just shown that i'm not aware of all of that (laughs) absolutely i want to learn that myself now no absolutely of course do do you look at that rob or or do you know the differences between them i I don't i would imagine it's to do with the climate where they're located but i don't possibly i I mean it's it's more to do with the landscape to be honest with a a forest we we think of there being a canopy and and lots of shade and 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 lots of trees basically um but a jungle is not necessarily just a landscape full of trees you have more undulations in the jungle it's harder to to move through it you know you've got a lot of bushes you've maybe got a lot of rocks and hills and caves and that kind of thing so it, it can be harder to move through a jungle than it is to move through a forest because with a forest you're literally just sort of walking between tree trunks whereas with a jungle you've got um, a massive undergrowth as well (laughs) so that's the main difference between them Um, and i can see why they become interchangeable because a lot of the artistic depictions of jungles tend to you know have the trees there but yeah if you actually go to a jungle you'll find big patches like like the jungle in this story which don't have any trees but they are still part of the jungle there we go every day is a school day <laughs> yeah totally <laughs> that's fascinating I, i've actually been to some rainforests so i did not know i did not know that so thank you this is one of the extra benefits of being a writer that you can talk to your children about because when you come to write a story and you want to make sure that you're uh, not giving a feast of lies for everybody who you want to get your facts straight that you know can help you pick out all sorts of amazing information well i'm just going to have to apologize and say when you look at the notes i've sent you could you change the word forest to jungle (laughs) 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 Um, part of the geography curriculum is comparing locations so comparing a location that you as a class or a school are familiar with to a different one Mm. so i would compare the jungle in the story definitely not the forest but the jungle (laughs) to the your local forest yeah (laughs) or a local area yeah i I put compare the forest because i was thinking you could go and visit your own forest Mm. one that's nearby but it's a bit trickier to visit your own jungle yeah would you definitely be wanting to pick comparisons that they could visit then i mean you you could just do it to your local area Hmm. so how is the the setting of this story different to our setting but if you wanted to do it with a with a jungle or with a forest then you could do that and you could start to bring in well how are they different Hmm. part of the key stage one curriculum as well is starting to look at countries and continents and oceans uh, so beginning to identify where they are on a map, um, it extends mm-hmm. further in Key Stage 2, but I would definitely get them to locate where your school is on a map 
and then start to look at a map of where you might find a jungle as well. I think it would mm. be good to, having talked about the difference between a jungle and a forest, you could then draw a map of a jungle. Mm. So what different kind of things, what different kind of features could you see there? Maybe not go into it in the same amount of detail that you would with Key Stage 2 or Key Stage 3, but what can we expect to see? Mm. And how is that going to be different to our local area? As we know, maps are wonderful tools for teaching, and this proves it yet again. You've also, I think, got a, a comparison built in with just the, the first few paragraphs of the story between the jungle and the savanna, haven't you? Because you've, uh, you've got lions in both, but they are very different kinds of lions. Yeah. And yeah. you've got the whole confusion over to whether the lion is actually the king of the jungle uh, when he's not. He's, he's the king of the savanna. And yeah, that gives you an opportunity to encourage your children to do more of the same. But that was the reason why I was asking you about the local area thing, because uh, okay. um, unless you happen to be close to either a jungle or a savannah, you're going to find it yeah. difficult to do. <laughs> Doesn't it, at the start of the story as well, it says that they, they go to a village, don't they? Hmm. So you could, in theory, say, okay, well, let's start off by comparing that village to where we live and then look yeah. at the areas your environment that's around you the different habitats that are there mm. things like that and those people in that village were obviously likely to bump into a lion when they were out for a wander it, what sort of creatures are you going to be yeah. likely to bump yeah. into yeah will we find any lorises what is the plural of loris do you know i'm gonna guess it is lorises okay not lorai because um, it would have to have a greek root for it to be oh, lorai, yeah. wouldn't it? yeah yeah <laughs> okay that's it that's an aside <laughs> <laughs> so some quite a few lesson ideas there for geography and history but religious education is the other humanities subject we're exploring today nicola what would you say is the main lesson idea you picked out here for ages 7 to 11 sacrifice is the main one for for mm. re talking about sacrifice and what it is as parents and as teachers we, we are sacrificing things all the time but what do different religions do to show sacrifice to show their love for their god so for example in, in islam you could talk about ramadan and how muslims do not eat during daylight hours during the month of ramadan mm -hmm. They sacrifice that to show their faith, um, how Jews do not eat or drink for 25 hours on Yom Kippur and how in Easter Christians give up something for mm -hmm. Lent. So the idea, the concept of sacrifice comes really strongly through all of those religions um, and I'm sure other religions too. And talking about the fact that these animals, and we mentioned it earlier, didn't we, about the fact that the animals sacrifice themselves for the good of their jungle mm. and they did it willingly and you could then obviously strong link there with jesus and how he sacrificed himself for christians so that they could live happy and healthy lives yes, yeah. so talking about sacrifice discussing sacrifice discussing what it means to religious people and why it's important and then linking it very much to the story about why these animals sacrifice themselves and I, I know we mentioned death as well and i don't think death does come through but it's not mentioned explicitly. It's kind of implicit within the fact that they died, yeah. but that it's part of the story. The fact that they gave up their lives willingly because they were doing it for the greater good. And is there something that the children feel massively um, important about in society? What not would they give up their life for, but what would they put their time and their life into to make a difference in this world? And sort of big world issues mm. um, important as well. Often Aria go on a journey. So taking the concept of sacrifice, mm -hmm. learning about what happened in the story, learning about the different religions and how they look at sacrifice. So watching video clips, ideally having visitors in to talk about it, interviewing people or having questions that you could ask somebody from that faith. Yeah. You could get someone to email. So lots of literacy almost linked in order to fully understand the RE behind it and then developing themselves and having conversations yeah i think very much chatting and developing their general ideas about what's important to them and what would they do that could make a difference perhaps to the world mm. because they feel passionately about it yeah and maybe doing a speech i mean we i think that's been in a previous podcast but talking about something that they're passionate about and, and motivating other people to do something is quite nice absolutely i mean RE is, is very much taught through English, art, lots of different media, but developing those concepts at this point, this key, key concept of sacrifice, I think is the key. Definitely. 
that's sadly all we have time for in this episode, folks. If you'd like to talk to us about anything you've heard in this podcast, or if there's a subject you are soon to teach that you'd like us to cover, you can find us on social media using at Teach Happily, or leave us a review using your favorite podcast app. Please also share this podcast with your colleagues and help us start a story-led revolution in classrooms around the world so children everywhere can learn in a way that's effective, memorable and enjoyable all at the same time. Tomorrow, the animals of the Indian jungle will help us explore design and technology. But right now, it only remains for us to say cheerio and we hope to hear your story soon. So, cheerio! And we hope to hear your story soon! soon.